Death we all are. Part one. <clears throat> Let me just get out of the way and say that I'm glad they uh split the final book into two movies. They yeah, actually approve of it. Unlike when they do it with other ones, like the Final Hunger Games book, because that did not need split into two. As a matter of fact, not only am I glad they split Deathly Hollows into two parts, I actually wish they had done it with um, Goblet of Fire. <coughs> but hey, hindsight's twenty twenty, I guess. So, <sighs> what did I think of this movie? Uh, well, once again, the acting is great, and I mean, well, because all the kid actors are now <coughs> adults, and all of the uh, adult cast has always been great. Um, Emma Watson, I still think, gives the weakest performance. She's not bad, but compared to all the actors and actresses around her, it's just like... Uh, they they still do better, especially Luna's actress. <clears throat> if you know my thoughts previously on that, I think she was perfectly cast and she perfectly nails her character. Uh, the music was phenomenal, as per the course for this franchise. But one thing I will say is. The action kind of sucks. Like, action scenes, battles, and what is supposed to be wizard duels, but just amounts to, I've got a stick that's a gun. So do you. Let's shoot the same spells at each other. Back and forth, over and over again. No change whatsoever. And this is coming after seeing Order of the Phoenix, like two movies ago now, and that final scene with the duel between Dumbledore and Voldemort, yeah, that's the height of wizard duels in Harry Potter. There's none that will top that now. And this is a problem that's in the books, too, honestly, and in the books, it annoys me, and in the movies, it's just annoying, it looks really repetitive, and I'm just like... I can understand maybe the younger <sighs> witches and wizards like Ron, Harry, Hermione, Luna, Neville, and all of them doing the whole gun battle stuff, but there are adult wizards fighting here. You know, so like, I mean, I got like super excited when at first, you know, like real fight comes on scene where Harry, Ron, and Hermione are in the diner, you know, and I'm like, ooh, here it comes. Oh. That's, that's right. Witches and wizards suck in this movie. And, and this book franchise when it comes to spells. Oh. I miss the days where there were spells like Tom Riddle writing his own name with fire, you know? <laughs> or, you know, Patronus charms. And yeah, it does make an appearance, the Patronus. Uh, they, once again, never establish that there's a difference between the normal shield charm, the shield normal shield version, and an actual corporal Patronus, which is, you know, the animal. So I'm left there wondering, um... Yeah, but why include it if you're not even going to explain it properly? Which is a real bummer in this movie because um they use it. <laughs> it they use it a lot in the final book. The Patronus and then like Snape's Patronus is a doe and that's supposed to be really significant but anybody who's only watched movies would just be there like what what was that even supposed to mean hello I'm confused you didn't explain this properly <sighs> Bellatrix is just psychotic and 
Helena Bottom Carter was. Uh, that is her name, like Helena Bottom Carter. Yeah, she does phenomenal with Bella Circle Strange. Kind of one note, one note villain in the books. She's just crazy with her actress. It's just like it comes out, and you're just like, yeah, that's that's actually really good. Um, the Ministry of Magic scene in this, where they break into the Ministry of Magic, was just kind of like, um, okay, this is kind of. Really disappointing. Also, there's this scene. Well, how they break into the Ministry of Magic is they use Polyjuice Juice Potion to turn into other people. And there's this scene where they're lifting and carrying the per one of the people they're supposed to change into in this building. And there's just this random bystander, this background ca guy walking by, looking right at them. It's like, hmm, a kidnapping in broad daylight. Oh, I guess I better do nothing. <laughs> uh, a battle of the seven Harrys. Uh, it was a really good opening. I wish we could. S I wish it wasn't like so dark. And that that's something else that really annoys me is that a lot of the whole wow is really dark just continues. How's about Rufus Grimser being introduced only to get killed off in like what after only like a minute or two of screen time? Uh well they didn't even have him in the sixth movie, but okay. And definitely Hollow Symbol looks kind of cool in the books. Well, in the movies, I meant to say. <laughs> Dang it. Uh What else is there? Um, oh, the most magic Harry does in the movie is in the scene where he's using the other wand, one of the wands they stole from Malfoy Manor, and he's pointing it at the fire, and then the fire just shoots up, and it's like, oh, well, congratulations, Harry. That's the most magical thing you would do in this movie. Uh, we'll kick. Quick, um. Oh, I just lost my train of thought. Hold on. I really, really hated the camping in the final book. It was just. Ugh! Like, can we do something else? Like, anything other than read about camping. Which is why, in my opinion, the weakest book is definitely hollows because it's just like yeah I get it they're on the run hunting horcruxes but y you couldn't have come up with a better way to show it um okay so you know, they don't have Remus's moment where he finds them at Grimmauld place which was disappointing because it really is a good character moment for Harry where he's just like Remus you're being a dick. Stop being a dick. <laughs> um, I love that scene that was just in that picture where uh, Voldemort's asking for wands and he reaches down and like, Lucius, how about your wand? And Lucius is just like, my lord. <laughs> like in the most pathetic voice he could manage. And it's just like, your wand, Lucius. And then it's like, what? Give you my wand, Lucius. No! You're a terrible wizard! <laughs> um... Uh, the Malvoir Manor stuff was pretty interesting, though I have to say, Malvoir Manor looks really, really small in comparison to what I imagined from the books. Because keep in mind, Voldemort uses it as his headquarters, so all the Death Eaters ha have to be there constantly, and it's just like, wow, you mean his entire army fits inside that house? Like, 
Okay. You were better off using the Riddle House. <coughs> um, Bill and Fleur's wedding was kind of... Eh, okay, that, that's nice. I liked it. Minus the fact that there were so few people there. Like, it's supposed to be Bill's family and family friends, and then Fleur's family and family friends were supposed to be there. And it's like, is that all the bigger their families are? Um... Fred and George have somewhat of a personality now, so that's nice. I really don't like how Hollywood makes all twins act the same, where it's just like, ooh, let's finish each other's sentences. And yeah, they do that in the books. But they still had their own individual character. And it's nice to see that come through a little bit in the movies, for once. Uh... They try to go down this whole road while Ron's away. That Harry, showing Harry and Monty, you know, showing some romance stuff. And it's like, oh, they do the dancing. And it's supposed to be a scene where you're just like, yeah, okay, they find each other so unappealing that they couldn't end up together. But it still came across as, you know, being like, ooh, we could put them together and I have never subscribed to the whole Harry shouldn't end up with Hermione so including any of that stuff in the movies was just no no just no it's Jenny or no one and I don't even think Harry and Jenny make a good relationship in the movies but at least they stuck to that so, uh, what else is there? They kind of <clears throat> gloss over that Dumbledore has this mysterious dark past. I, do they ever bring up the lies of Albus Dumbledore or that book Rita Skeeter is supposed to be writing? Because I don't think they do. Which is strange, because it's actually important in the books, because it's like, ooh, just who exactly was Dumbledore? What dark secrets lie in his past, you know? Um, <sighs> and the films are just determined to make Hagrid look like nothing but a bumbling oaf. Like, during the whole <clears throat> actual... Battle of the Seven Parters. Hagrid, like, heroically jumps off the bike to grab a hold of this uh, Death Eater that's trying to kill Harry and takes the Death Eater down. And it's like, oh my god, did Hagrid survive or not? I mean, they killed Dumbledore at this point, they kill off anyone. And it's like this really actually heroic <coughs> moment where you're like, and kind of a tear-jerking moment, too, because you don't know if Hagrid's actually legitimately dead now. And then he shows back up, and you're like, oh, thank God he survived. Well, that was close, and good on you, Hagrid. Way to be a hero. But now it's like, oh, he passes out, and Harry has to pilot them down or something. And it's like, really? That's what you're going with? Also, I am confused. Does the Statute of Secrecy exist in the movies or not because in the beginning of Pr Prisoner of Azkaban Harry is practicing magic outside of Hogwarts in his muggle home in Order of the Phoenix they're just flying on brooms through the streets of London I guess and then in this one they're doing the exact same thing only they're fighting each other now how was the magical world not exposed in the movies? Like, seriously. You know how many people would have to be obliviated for that to get covered up? 
don't know, it's just an inconsistency that's just like, wait, does the statute of secrecy exist or not? You have to make your minds up. But they never do, really. Uh, so, yeah, we covered a lot of stuff. Like, the magic being so disappointing. <laughs> Uh, no, seriously, it is really disappointing. Also, do they ever mention the names of the two Death Eaters that were in the cafe for them? I mean, I just watched this and I can't remember. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Rupert Grant gives a great performance in this, and what do you know, it's Ron being a dick, which is kind of his whole character in the uh, movies by this point. Which is disappointing, because the Ron in the books was just actually a human being. And he was funny. But I guess that just doesn't matter in the movies. So, uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything else to talk about. Oh, wait, they ended this one with uh, Voldemort getting... The outer wand, the most powerful wand, and uh, <coughs> I kind of like that because it sets it up for people who haven't read the books yet to be like, "Oh my God, he's got the outer wand! How are they going to win?" Well, I guess that about covers it. I guess. So all in all, I would probably give this a 7 out of 10 you could go 6 it's not my favorite amongst the movies and I certainly don't think it's the best but uh yeah was, that's my opinion and uh thanks for watching this when you do Subscribe if you want, and don't forget to give yourselves a big thumbs up. Goodbye, everybody.